nonlinear inequalities are a lot more involved to solve than it seems like they would be. Um, so here's an example. x plus 1 times x plus 5 less than or equal to 0. Okay, so as soon as you see um, this something with the, with of the form x squared, which this essentially would be, and, and an inequality, um, you set aside some time because you have a little bit of work ahead of you. That's just how these problems go. There's an entire method, and we'll get into that. But first, let's just look at this specific example as if we knew what the graph looked like. Um, we don't know what the graph looks like, and that's what makes these so hard. But just to get an idea of how the method works, let's first begin by looking at the graph. So here's what this graph looks like. And notice that we want to find the places where this is less than or equal to zero. So we want to find the places where this graph is below, below the x-axis, x-axis. Okay, so, right, so looking at the graph, we can tell that this is the region that we're interested in down here. We want that, we don't care about it up here. Okay, because we're, we're looking at, at this as y equals x plus one, x plus 5, and we're saying where is that y less than or equal to 0? Where is that y down below the x-axis here? And when we answer this, we don't answer it in terms of y values, though. We answer it in terms of the x values that make this true. So if I were to color in just the x values that make this statement true, it would be from here at negative 5, all the way up here to negative 1. Okay, so that I'm coloring in the places on the x-axis that make this statement true, where the, where the y values are less than 0, right? And then since it's less than or equal to 0 here, I'm going to go ahead and include the endpoints because this is where it's actually equal 0. So, oops, make that a little more clear there. Okay, so there's my interval. Other people sometimes just color in the endpoints like that. All right, that works too. Okay, so, so there's our answer. Right, we answer all of these inequalities in terms of the x values only. So from negative 1, I know it's kind of hard to see now with all my scribbling all over it. Uh, sorry, that's negative 5. Negative 5 up to negative 1. That's the area that I have colored in on the graph. So these are really easy if you have the graph. The problem is we won't have a picture of the graph, right? That's the whole thing. But let's use the graph to explain the methodology when we go to solve these. What we're going to do is we're going to take our equation and we're going to find the zeros. We're going to set it equal to zero and solve. What that will do is give us the regions. It'll give us these three basic regions. So there's a zero and there's a zero. So we're just going to look at a single number line like this, and then we're going to break it up into regions, right? So I'm pretending I don't know what the graph is. Um, and, I'll, and I'll go through this entire method shortly without the graph. Um, and what you do then is we'll, we'll pick a point in each region. So maybe I'll pick the point negative 6, and I'll plug it in to notice that, well, I have to go all the way up here to get the point. So that point is not going to be less than or equal to zero. We're only looking for where it's less than or equal to zero. That's going to be a true. So where it's greater than zero, that's going to be a false. So this region is greater than or equal, greater than zero. Uh, this region over here is greater than zero. We want where it's less than or equal to zero. So this is going to be false. So this whole region gets a false, right, up to this dividing line here. Then we test another point in, in between these two points. So maybe I'd test negative 3. I'd plug it into this y, and I would get some value down here. So now we're less than 0, because we're down here. And this notice how this works for the entire region here. So I'd say true for that region. All right? Then I'd go and pick some value in the third region. 0 is always good where you have it. And I would notice that f of 0, or plugging that into y, would be up here somewhere but we're only interested in this particular problem where it is less than or equal to zero. So I'm going to label that region false again. Okay, so 
of these three regions, only this middle region is true, which we already know. But see how I could do that without using the graph? So we're going to ditch the false regions and only include the true region in our answer. Well, again, we have negative 5 to negative 1. Okay, so, so that's the approach that we're using here, just to give you some, some basic visual understanding of what happens, because otherwise we can really get lost in these kinds of problems with the steps, and there's all kinds of things going on, and it's easy, easy to lose the forest for the trees, so to speak. So let's bring up the steps and go through this step by step to solve this problem completely without referencing the graph at all. Okay, so here are the steps. And there are a lot of steps, but that's just par for the course for these kinds of exercises. So let's go through them. Okay, step one, make sure zero is on one side of the inequality. Okay, well, zero is on one side of the inequality. That's good news. Check. If it's a rational equation, combine um, over a single LCD. Well, it's not a rational equation, so we're off the hook. Solve the related equation. Okay, so what that means is we solve the equation x plus 1, this is the related equation, x times x plus 5 equals 0. Well, we can do that pretty quickly. x equals negative 1, x equals negative 5. Done. Okay, so that we're done with that. Separate the number line into regions defined in the previous step. Okay, so we take a, a line like this, right? Maybe yours is a little straighter than mine. Um, here's negative 5, here's negative 1, so we have something like 0 is probably here, but these are my main boundaries. I just put 0 up there as a, as a marker. Okay, so there we go. There's our region. So we have three regions, right? We have everything over here, that's one region. We have everything in the middle, that's another region. And then everything to the right of 1, that's a third region. Okay, so test a point in each region. Okay, so let's come up with some test points here. Um, on the right region here, I'm going to test x equals 0, because anytime you can test 0, that's going to be the easiest case. Uh, in the middle region, let's do x equals negative 2, so this is what I'm going to test in blue here. And then over here on the left, let's do x equals negative 6. These are what I'm testing and what I'm testing. Okay, and then I like to make a little chart. So here's my test, and here's my, um, I'll just say f of x equals x plus 1, x plus 5. Okay, and then you test like this. You don't have to completely compute these. You just need to know if each factor is positive or negative. And notice that this is in factored form. You always want this to be in factored form factored. Okay, so that's factored. So let's see here. Let's pick a point to test. Um, okay, so here we've already picked our point, so we're, let's do negative 6. When I plug this in, negative 6 plus 1 is still negative. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative. Negative times negative equals positive. But we're looking for where it's less than or equal to 0. So less than or equal to zero gets a true, because our equation would be true there, or, or, or that point would be true for that equation, and greater than zero is going to get a false for this case. If, if these inequalities were changed, then this, this part right here would be different. So since it's positive, but we're only looking for negative values, I'm going to write a false there. So this whole region gets a false. Okay. Now we test x equals negative 2. Back into this we go. Negative 2 minus 1. I don't even need to know what that is. I just know that it's negative. Negative 2 plus 5. Well, that's going to be a positive. And negative times positive is a negative. But negative is what we want, right? Because we're looking for the points that are less than or equal to 0. So that's going to get us a true. So there's our true. And finally, let's test x equals 0. Okay, so plugging in 0 here, 0 plus 1 is positive. 0 plus 5, that's positive. 
positive times a positive is still positive, but we're looking for places where this is negative, less than or equal to zero to be true, so this is false. Okay, false. And then finally, the answer is the true regions. So this true region is the answer, so we're going to be using negative 5 to negative 1, and then you always have to check the endpoints. Since this is less than or equal to, less than or equal to, this equal to means include the endpoints, the endpoints of the interval. Okay, so if, if this was just less than without the equal to, it'd be the same answer, but we would do soft brackets instead of hard brackets. So here, in all its glory, is the answer, which we already know. All right, negative 5 to negative 1. Hard brackets to indicate that we're including those endpoints. There you have it. So there we go, and we did step 6. So just be aware, when you see the x squared, or like, you know, two x's multiplied together, and an inequality of any, any kind, you know, some kind of flag should go up saying, okay, I need to, to buckle up, there's going to be a lot of work involved in this problem. And even students in calculus make that mistake sometimes. They, they forget that you have to go through all this to solve these inequalities, and they try to just do it some fast way, and points come off, right? Because it's, it's an incorrect, it's incorrect um, without giving it a lot of thought like this.